Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from Corral Midwest to talk about, well, more than the upcoming concert. But first off, let's welcome Dr. Brad Barrett, uh, nice to, uh, the director of the Corral. Nice to have you back, Brad. Good morning, Dennis. Our own Bob Stewart, charter member Hello. of the Corral Midwest, and also a new member. Brand uh, new member. Brand new member, uh, John Paul Schaefer. Yes. Nice to have you on the show. Too. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah, this is Thank great. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about getting you on the show. Indeed, for I know. For reasons <laughs> that we will discuss. Yes, indeed, it's uh, coming together. For quite a while, and yeah. I'm glad that we finally put it together, Likewise. because if you're thinking right now, John Paul Schaefer, I know that name. Uh, that's because even though you are in the corral as a singer, what you are is one of Cedar Rapids' best-known wow. visual artists yes, in well, uh, paint and a variety of uh, different mediums. I know you've got your studio uh -huh. and gallery mm -hmm. uh, that has been up and running for yeah. a while well, now. Well, actually, the gallery is already a thing of the past. I traded it for an expanded garden. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did. There was, yeah, so it's another long story that has nothing to do with why we're here today. But uh, anyway, yes, but my studio is still active, and I garden quite a bit. And that's also kind of reflected in the art that we will talk about. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, let's let's start with that, because okay. this is going to be a big part of the of the concert. Yes, yes. Uh, you have joined, you joined the concert, or right. the concert, right. well, sorry, the Corral Midwest. Yeah. And then almost immediately you started... Well, got you actually, thinking about an art piece. Well, yeah, it actually starts the other way around. So, um, Dr. Barrett started reaching out to me. I think it was in the early spring with interest in my art, um, and so it would be that we would finally have coffee one day when he came to the house and he saw my studio and got to see some work in person. And in the course of getting acquainted, I expressed to him that I sing and that I'm interested in music and have been doing more with it. Right. And so that's really kind of how this uh, okay. cross-collaboration uh, bubbled up. So he had suggested that it would be nice to include my art um, as part of this season's opener. And um, as a career artist, right, and as you had touched on, I do a variety of different things. And that, that is because when I started my career, I knew instinctively that if I was going to have a livelihood as an artist, I would have to do a lot of different things, right? And um, so I, I had to learn some on-the-street salesmanship skills, right? <laughs> I had to learn how to um, spot an opportunity, right? And then when that opportunity comes, take it and, and run with it. And so, uh, so quickly I become a student of Dr. Brad, or I'm sorry, Dr. Barrett, and... Uh, and so I started lessons, um, and he had me audition, and I was at my first rehearsal that evening, right? <laughs> it all just happened very, very quickly. And I was feeling very much in over my head, right? Um, because I have dabbled in music, right? I took lessons when I was a, a kid, piano lessons. Um, I, I sang a lot as a kid. There were musical people in my family, guitar players and bluegrass pickers and things like that. But to, to do this kind of formal, structured music, right, and be an ensemble singer is an entirely different experience. Were you a choir kid back in the day? No, not at all, not at all, you see. So this is completely new for me. And I wasn't raised in a church, you know, where I would have been singing uh, in this kind of format. So um, it, as daunting as it was and even scary, um, I didn't feel nervous about it. I, I felt quite at home. And I have to say, the choral... All of the members have been very welcoming, and I feel very at home there, right? And the, the learning curve has been steep, <laughs> but I'm picking it up, and I'm, I'm catching on. And so I'm embracing the education, you know, that that's providing. So so that's your experience as yes. a new member of uh, Corral Midwest. Correct. We'll come yeah, back yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, i got yeah, a couple yeah. more questions mm -hmm. yeah. uh, about that. But... Uh, also, you've you've got these four pieces yes. that you have just done right. that are going to be a part of the, the concert this weekend. That's right. So uh, ahead of all of this that I just told you, I was already thinking about starting a Four Seasons piece. And I have material, I've had material in my storeroom for a long time um, that lends well to the kind of presentation uh, that we'll unveil on Sunday. Um, and so then after talking with Dr. Barrett and getting involved with the corral, 
it all just suddenly, I mean, that after that very first rehearsal, um, it all came to me during the rehearsal, in fact. When I was hearing the music, uh, there's a passage in one of our pieces that sounds like bird song. Um, and I could, I was conceiving these images already. And, and by the way, I paint very intuitively, right? So when I go to the canvas, it's a blank canvas, uh, or maybe a blank page of manuscript paper, if you will. Um, and so, you know, I, I already liken the, the gesture of conducting <laughs> with, with the gesture of painting, right? Uh, I've always seen that overlap. And um, I've always been aware of the overlap in terminology between musicians and visual artists. And uh, straight away in that first uh, rehearsal experience, I heard Dr. Barrett use art, what I would say are art terms, to describe what he wanted from the chorale. Um, I think you even use the word palette mm -hmm. uh, to suggest um, how we sing together. So yeah, so all of this then becomes excellent touchstones for uh, where this work begins. So you've developed these new pieces, these yes. four pieces called mm -hmm. Seasons of Song. Seasons of Song. Uh, all, all, all of them feature birds. Yes, birds, so. singing birds, right? And then each set of birds uh, corresponds to their respective season. So that's the four seasons aspect of the work. Um, but it's a combination, it's a mixed media piece. So the centerpieces are painted canvases, but they're nested inside uh, wood panels that are by my design. They were custom made some years ago um, as part of another body of work that I was making. So these are leftover supply pieces that I had in my storeroom. Recycled. And so well, not uh, really it, recycled. Uh, upcycled. Upcycled, yeah. So, <laughs> so they, were just, they were just bare bones uh, wood structures, right? So they serve as frames. They're, they're custom built so that they receive a 24-inch canvas as a centerpiece. But then it allows an 8-inch border all the way around that. And the wood then receives collage elements. So all of that's new and specific to this musical work. So I had collected a batch of old sheet music from Dr. Barrett that I literally tore into pieces and then built these collages <laughs> largely out of old sheet music, choral music and various other. Um, and then there's autobiographical elements that I have woven into those collages um, because that's also something consistent throughout all of my work um, is that I always embed something that's personal to me and, and my story. If you're watching the video while John has been describing this, uh, we will have a shot of the oh, yes. pieces sure. uh, that, uh, that you can look at if uh, you're watching online. Uh, and if, if not, if you're listening on the radio, they're right there front and center on the Corral Midwest website, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brad, how are, how are you working these, uh, the, this work into the program? Well, when I select a, a program... Uh, I don't know if it's coincidental or how you would best describe it, but it it tends to happen organically. And the centerpiece of our fall is the Requiem for the Living, and which is very interesting to me because of my, you know, obviously my choral background, but the the whole Requiem is a funeral mass. But this is this is for the living. And uh, I'm real I've always been a real fan of Dan Forrest's music. Uh, especially at Christmas, uh, and this piece is by by Dan Forrest, and uh, that really works as the centerpiece of our of our whole concert. And then we build, <laughs> I build according uh, you know around that. Also, the the present seems like a social climate that we are experiencing right now with so much division and hate in our society that I wanted to to build my season this year uh, on. Um, love, joy, peace, tolerance, diversity, acceptance. And so I naturally found pieces that, that I thought spoke to that, to echo that, that particular uh, thematic design. And then is the hopeful end result is, because I know, John, you said that you were uh, 
the proceeds from the sale would be to would, yes. would go to Corral Midwest. So right. is the That's idea are, are list price? Are we doing an auction? How is that working? Well, uh, people have already been responding to mm. the various teaser posts that I've been putting on Facebook. Uh, collectors of mine, uh, for instance, one such collector who lives in North Carolina. Uh, had reached out right away with enthusiastic interest. Now, you know, it, it's still being considered, but, you know, that gives me a lot of encouragement. Um, the price is $20,000. It's consistent with where works of mine on this scale are currently selling. Um, so there's four component pieces, right? So that's roughly $5,000 per panel. Um, because it's one complete set, it'll be sold that way uh, to a very specific collector. Um, and because of its scale, it's, it's a kind of work that lends really well to an institution. Um, and, um, and I had been telling Dr. Barrett that Kirkwood Community College actually has a very large collection of That's, my original work. That works. is true, yes. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that they have one such quite like hmm. uh, Seasons of Song. Okay. And so, you know. All right, get President, be, uh, <laughs> get President Fisher on the phone. <laughs> yes, but, you know, it's the kind of work that would really weld to an institution. That's really my point. Uh, and a lot of the work that I make are for institutions or corporate collections. Um, so my anticipation is, is some uh, generous collector, perhaps a corporate collector or institutional collector, um, would purchase the piece. And then, and then it'll be an even split okay. with, with the corral. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the music in the concert a little bit more. Uh, Bob, as, the, uh, as our resident <laughs> uh, founding member of Corral Midwest, talk a little bit about... Uh, singing these pieces and how you're enjoying getting to know them. Boy, that's, that, we, we did a little bit of the Dan Forrest, the, uh, the Requiem, a couple of the movements, uh, I think last year, one of our concerts, and it was just, a, the music is beautiful. It, it's just very moving, the entire thing. So that's, that's been a joy to get, it, kind of in, investigate into the rest of the entire, the, the entire thing. Huge fan of Mozart. We're doing a piece by Mozart, Laudate Dominum. I'm, I'm always a fan of doing Mozart and any of that early work. And uh, Spiritual by Moses Hogan, um, love the spirituals as well. So those are probably three of my favorite pieces that we're going to be doing. Uh, John, uh, as a new member yes. of, the, of the chorus, and you talked a little bit about this being uh, maybe just a little, uh, getting just a little nervous going into this. I mean, yeah. These are really good singers. They are good singers, and, <laughs> and all very well accomplished. Too, and it, it, right? it, I would think that coming into this group cold would yeah. be pretty intimidating. Although you did say you'd been taking some voice lessons, some lessons, Brian. and uh, everyone, as I said, have been very encouraging. You know, and I do sing well enough. Obviously, they wouldn't let me in the door. I think so. Uh, <laughs> you know, I am coming in with a with a, a greater confidence uh, than before. Um, and, and that, that first night that I was at rehearsal, you know, as I was introducing myself, I was very humble, uh, and admitting that I'm basically a karaoke singer, right? Cause <laughs> up until now, that's really been my experience. Uh, Brad, talk just a minute about bringing new folks into the, into the organization, because it is, you know, there's an audition process and obviously you're looking for, uh, not only participation, but also the right voices to complete the sound of the uh, of the ensemble. Well, there's several different, I guess, different ways I, I look at recruiting singers. Um, we've been real fortunate to have so many, because Cedar, the Cedar Valley area is so rich in choral singing that so many of these these people that graduate from high school, go away to college, come back and work for Rockwell, come back and work for these, you know, come back home to work, then they want to re-examine or re explore the possibility of singing once again. Mm -hmm. And so that has been a great resource and a much appreciated resource. Uh, we, I have been fortunate that I've connected with so many of the area choral directors and music teachers that, that want to sing. Uh, in a choir that rehearses each week and does more difficult or more challenging repertoire, uh, and we're very fortunate. We we have, there's several you know great community organizations within our area that people can kind of choose the level or the amount of time they need to that they feel like they can spend. Uh, I mean, we've had people that have sang in the choir for 22 years, raised their children, and still you know chose to sing with us every Sunday night. Um, 
but I also, I, it's kind of a shot in the arm is to find people that maybe have some hidden music skill that they didn't realize they had, talk to them, cultivate them a little bit, and bring them in because it is a great community of singers, mm-hmm. great people. Yeah. And I guess probably my bottom line is, yes, I want a great singer, but I know that Bob Stewart, I know that charter member Tracy McPartland, these wonderful people that I adore and respect, they want not only great singers, but they want nice people. Mm-hmm. And, well, and so that I, I almost think that, that that weighs more heavily than talent is is that kindness and that, that uh, yeah, the, the loving spirit that, that hopefully we foster within that choir. And also, I hate to interrupt, but I, I like to emphasize the fact that in the last several years, he's brought on some of his students from his studio, high school students, which years ago we, we we haven't had any you know young blood in there like that and it just brings an entire new perspective that i think we have maybe five or six younger students unfortunately they graduate and leave and then, then, then we then, have then, to then, uh, then they go then they go to uh, well like juilliard right like juilliard <laughs> like oh and, and, and uh, but i i think that just gives the the corral a, a wonderful shot of youthfulness in in those uh, instances and 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 the nice thing about that too is the the high school students, the few that are are that are out of my studio that sing that have sang with us in the past, their high school directors welcome that. Mm-hmm. They said they come to our choirs and bring this you know educate you know uh, this enrichment that that this experience that filters into yeah. our programs. Yeah, and our they're school. they're leaders in their own exactly. choirs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a win win. Well, you are. To turn a phrase, preaching to the choir here, <laughs> because we are all about making sure and trying to promote opportunities for people to be involved in music, not only in school, but in you know in, in the many years that you will be out of school. That you shouldn't you shouldn't have to quit singing or playing your instrument just because you're done with high school or college. Right. Right. So as as you said so well, Brad, we have a wealth of opportunities here in our area for Absolutely. people to do just that, and this is definitely one of them. And the, the one thing that being a project of a very small school in southern Missouri where, you know, I was kind of the only soloist out of the choir, um, my heart has always kind of gone out and, and to those teachers that build these programs and have success at the small school level. With that said, uh, it's our mission our, as an outreach uh, mission with the Corral is to involve high school students. But also to what excited me this year and this fall is on Sunday, the Tipton High School Concert Choir under the direction of Julie Thomas. I, I heard them back in the spring at State Large Ensemble where I was judging, and the choir sang so incredibly, and her conducting was exquisite. And so I reached out to Julie and, and said, would you be interested in being, you know, taking part, be a part of our fall concert? Abs- she ju- jumped on it, absolutely. So we're really excited about that because, once again, that really does echo our, our mission for outreach. The concert is uh, entitled Sending Love, Joy, and Peace Through Song, coming up Sunday, uh, Christ Episcopal Church, yes? Yes. And what is the start time? 2.30. 2.30. So the Tipton Concert Choir and then, of course, Corral Midwest. Uh, how do people get tickets? You can get them online. You can... Uh, reach out to us on our website or on our Facebook and contact or contact me. All right. And what is the website? Uh, Corral Midwest. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, good luck with the concert. John, welcome to the to, to this new artistic Indeed. area of expression. <laughs> uh, CorralMidwest.org, if you would uh, like to get tickets for the concert. John, where do you live online if people want to take a look at this piece uh, so or they, any other Well, work? they can find me on Facebook. And in fact, just this morning, I posted the entirety of the piece, the pieces uh, on Facebook. So they can find me there, John Paul Schaefer. Um, and then I also have a website, SchaeferFineArt.com, S-C-H-A-F-E-R. SchaeferFineArt.com. I'm quite easy to find online, actually. Um, so. <laughs> well, uh, good luck with the concert this Thank weekend, you. and uh, and come back in a few weeks. I think well, it'll be time to talk for Christmas already. It's happening really Hard to quick. Believe. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a, a, a little added uh, uh, item here, all four pieces will be on display at our concert. Oh, oh indeed, yeah. 
Great. Right Excellent. On. So you'll be able to see them in person as well. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, again, Corral Midwest in concert uh, this Sunday at 2.30 at Christ Episcopal Church, corralmidwest.org, if you'd like more information. Gentlemen, thanks for being here with me today. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Dennis. Dennis. so much. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio most weekdays at 10.30, on demand at kcck.org slash culture, or subscribe using your favorite podcast player. Watch our videos on the KCCK Facebook and YouTube channels. Our producer is Lydia Kilgore. The Culture Crawl theme is composed by Vivian Shanley. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.